8th Congress is hereby called to order. Senator Cynthia Villar will lead the chamber in prayer. Let us put ourselves in the presence of God, God of power, might, wisdom, and justice. Through you, authority is rightly administered, laws are enacted, and judgment decreed. Assist us with your spirit of good counsel and fortitude. Grant that we may be enabled by your wisdom to lead according to your will. Help us to be good legislators and leaders. Lord, remind us that leadership is not about merely watching and correcting. Lord, let us remember that it is about listening and connecting. Lord, let us find out what people need and help provide for them. Let us always be reminded that leadership is less about the love of power and more about the power to serve. Lord, let us be affirmed by the servant leadership we witness in your son, Jesus. Let us walk in the path he has set. Let our greatest passion be compassion for the people we serve, our greatest strength, the will to serve, and our greatest victory, the reward of progress and peace in our nation. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Senator Villar. The Imus Institute Science and Technology Pop Ensemble will lead us in the singing of the Philippine National Anthem. Afterwards, they, they will render a medley entitled Ako'y Pilipino at Magsimula Ka.
Magsimula ka Pabatiin ang kaigandang umaga Nang may ngiti sa iyong mga mata Sa pagkakaidli Gumising na Tupadin ang pangarap mong tunay Habang ang lakas iyo pang taglay Sa paghihintay Pagkamasana Pagkamasana Secretary, please call the roll. Roll call of members. The Honorable Senators Angara, Aquino, Binay, Caetano, Dilima, Derlon, Ejercito, Escudero, Gatsalian, Gordon, Onasan, Onteveros, Lacson, Ligarda, Pacquiao, Pangilinan, Po, Recto, Soto, Trellanes, Villanueva, Villar, Soveri, Senate President Pimentel. With 24 senators present, the chair declares the presence of a quorum. Majority Leader. Mr. President, uh, Mr. President, I move to approve to dispense with the reading of the journals of the uh, 20th session on Tuesday, September 13, and the 21st session of Wednesday, September 14, considered the same as approved. Is there any objection? There being none, the motion is approved. The journals of the two sessions uh, aforestated are approved. Mr. President, Mr. President, we'd like to acknowledge the presence of uh, some friends of the Senate, the guests of Senator Antiveros, the National Youth Parliament, uh, Mayor Zuniga of Cordon Isabella, together with Vice Mayor Mariano and Councillors, the National Teachers College Office Administration students, headed by Professor Serrano. And, of course, uh, we'd like to warmly welcome the guests of the Senate President in the session hall this afternoon, our distinguished guests, composed of members of the British Parliament, representing the British Group of the Interparliamentary Union, led by Sir David Amos, MP. And the other members of the delegation are Mark Richard, MP, Verenda Sharma, MP, Ian Paisley, MP, the Lord Rogan of Ivy, and the Baroness Hooper, CMG. The delegation is accompanied by Mr. Rob Contractor and Ms. Emily Davis, head of the Economic uh, British Embassy and Delegation Secretary. Welcome to our guest, most especially the British group of the Interparliamentary Union, led by Sir David Amos. Welcome to the Philippines and welcome to the Philippine Senate. Thank you. Huh? <laughs> Mr. President, 
Sir President. Majority Leader. Hood. Sir President. There are two senators uh, standing, so. Mm -hmm. Sir President, may I rise on a question of personal and uh, Mr. collective privilege? Majority mm -hmm. Leader. This was pre scheduled, Mr. President. I move, well, Mr. President, that we suspend the session and have a caucus to discuss important Objection, matters. Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President, um, the majority leader is in, in a quandary. I will have to throw the question to the body because um, I noticed Senator Alan Gaetano standing earlier. He wanted the, 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 the floor. I did not acknowledge him, although he has a reservation for a personal privilege speech. But I did not acknowledge him because I wanted to uh, go through with the approval of the journal. Um, but um, now that he is seeking the floor, I hear a motion from uh, Senator Sir the President, President Mr. Point of order. asking for a, a suspension. Point uh, of order, Mr. President. Yes. <coughs> the, a motion to uh, speak on a personal collective privilege takes precedence over a motion to suspend. As I said, Mr. President, uh, the majority leader is in a quandary. I would rather leave the issue to the, to the Senate President or the floor. Um, Mr. President, yes. under Rule uh, 89 of our rules, <coughs> where uh, no other motion can be entertained except the following and in the order which they appear, motion to adjourn, motion to set the day for the resumption of the session, motion to suspend the session. Section 89 is not applicable in my opinion because uh, that is while a motion or a, or a bill or resolution is being discussed. But there is now a motion to suspend. But if, is there any objection? I object, Mr. President. Okay, so we have to, we have to now uh, divide the House. All of those in favor of the motion to suspend say aye. Aye. All of those not in favor say nay. Nay. The nays have it. The motion to suspend is denied. Majority Leader. Can I ask for a roll call vote? Hello. How do you proceed? Roll call vote? Okay, to, to clarify the result, we resort to a roll call vote. Secretary, please. Conduct the roll call vote. Excuse me, Senator Sen Director? Yes, parliamentary inquiry. Mr. President, there are two motions made by two members of the majority. The minority has no interest in taking part in this issue, Mr. President. But you will be affected by the suspension of this session. So you can, uh, you can vote or you can uh, abstain. Uh, Mr. President, uh, on the part of the minority, we will take no part. Okay. <laughs> so, please, uh, Secretary, please proceed with the roll call vote. Abstain. May we clarify the, the uh, vote, Mr. President? They will be recorded as a motion. Abstain. is a motion to suspend. Yes. So, if you say yes, you are in favor of the motion to suspend. Yes. If you say no, you are not. Yes. Is that clear enough to all our colleagues? A yes is in favor of the motion to suspend. Secretary, please do the roll call vote. The Honorable Senators Angara, Aquino, Binay, Caetano, no. De Lima, Drilon, Ejercito, Escudero, Gachalian, Gordon, Honasan, Ponteveros, Lacson, Ligada, Pacquiao, Pangilinan, Po, Recto, Soto, Trillanes, Villanueva, Villar. Let, let him finish first. Yes, good. <laughs> okay. So very Senate President Pimentel. Okay, don't announce the result. What majority leader? What's the question? Uh, uh, how no. is the secretary? Okay, uh, reminder to our colleagues. Uh, uh, silence means yes. You have to state if you are if you are not in favor of the motion. You have to say that you are not in favor or vote no. Okay. Yes. So there was a wrong call vote. Yes and we no. know The results of the vote. He, the, the secretary does not know the result because nobody voted. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, we will have. We, uh, Senator Drilon, we have to have uh, an accurate voting. So, secretary, 
do it again. A roll call vote with that clarification. And those who abstain will also have to state that they are abstaining. Yes. Mm, Honorable Senators, Dandahan. Angara, Aquino, yes. Binay, Caetano, no. Hey, Atika, excuse me. Wait, Binay. Wait, Dandahan. Caetano, Wait. De Lima, Drilon, yes. Mm. Ejercito, no. Escudero, no Gatsalian, no. Gordon, no. Onasan, no. Ponteveros, no. Lacson, no. Ligarda, no. Pacquiao, no. Pangilinan, no. Po, no. Recto, no Soto, Right. Uh, Mr. President, may I explain my vote? Hmm? I, don't vote I don't know, Mr. President, because uh, although I, uh, I did the President pro tem earlier and I discussed it and I told him that I will seek a suspension, but uh, uh, this is a different situation now. I will have to vote with the, with the majority. I, I, I vote no, Mr. President. Continue. Trillanes. Villanueva. Villar, no. Soberi, no. Senate President Pimentel. No. We have to announce. Grab it. See, it's okay. There being six affirmative votes, 14 negative votes, and four abstention, the motion is denied. Majority Leader? Uh, in that case, Mr. President, uh, Senator Cayetano wishes to seek the floor, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, Senator Cayetano is recognized to speak on a matter of public interest. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, with the permission of our colleagues, may I use the projector and the screen? Go ahead, please. For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Yan po nasa Jeremiah 29.11. In the Bible, God's people were once or many times found themselves in exile. Many times they found themselves helpless. Yet they were assured not only was there a plan, but that there was the plan. We are a people and a nation in search of a vision, in search of a plan, in need of hope and praying for a future. Our past presidents, Mr. President, provided us with visions and plans. There were many gains, from Aquino to Ramos to Estrada to Arroyo to Aquino and now to Duterte. But there were also much failure. We are not here today to judge the past administrations nor to point fingers. Mismong Pangulo natin nagsabing, wag na tayo magturuan. We are not here to condemn nor to congratulate past leaders, but we are here to study the past and see how we can provide our people with a common vision, with goals, and with a workable plan. The last six years, we heard again and again a recurring theme of two things, economic gain and anti-corruption campaign. They were successful in many, or we were successful in many fronts, although there were criticisms of non-inclusive economy. 
na hindi lahat kasama sa economic gains. At meron din pong naging criticism na yung anti-corruption drive ay laban lang sa mga kalaban ng administrasyon. Nevertheless, no one can take it away from President Aquino and his team that there were substantial gains, there were actual gains, there were worldwide renown, and there were steps that were put in place that we can build on. Ngunit, Mr. President, pag tinignan natin ang news at tayo nagtanong sa mga tao nung panahon na yon, ano ang karaniwan sagot? What did the man in the street say? Kuya, magulo sa amin. Brother, there's chaos in the streets. Ano ang karaniwan sagot? Sir, maraming droga, kalat. Boss, grabe traffic. Senador, gutom kami ngayon eh. Patayan araw-araw, 5 years old, 8 years old, 12 years old, nire-rape. I did not see that on the BBC. I did not see that on CNN. I did not see that on Time Magazine. Those deaths, 40% uh, drug-related. Sariling ama, binaril ng anak, a son, shooting his father high on shabu, saying that he thought he was shooting the devil. Riding in tandem for a while was a daily occurrence. Di makasakay sa jeep o sa bus na nakalaga, nakalabas ang cellphone o oh may quintas o oh may jewelry. Maraming mag-boyfriend, mag-asawa, nag-away. Bakit hindi kita makontak? Eh kasi hindi ko malabas cellphone ko, nasa bag ko, nasa bulsa ko. Maganda kasi cellphone ko, baka manakaw. Hindi makauwi na hindi takot mabastos, ma-hold up, o mapaaway. Those movies of the 70s or 80s stuck in the mind of Filipinos wherein women sales lady, waitresses, cashiers, people from the office going home into not-so-affluent areas, being stopped by a group of men without t-shirts, drinking and saying, tagay ka muna, inum ka muna, upo ka muna dito. OFWs at senior citizens, those who should be protected, ang naging biktima ng tanimbala. Ngayon po, dalawang buwan pa lang mahigit, may pakiramdam na nakaayusan at kaligtasan. I am not saying that people are now safe. I am saying they feel safer. Ask people in the street, they will tell you, Boss, yung mga nagiinuman na sa loob na ng bahay, naka-t-shirt na lahat, Boss, hindi ko na alam na nasaan na yung mga nagbebenta ng droga. Nawala na dito. Boss, hindi na kami binabastos. Boss, yung mga batang 10, 12, 15 years old, hindi na nakakalat sa kalye. It's not perfect. In fact, the President very candidly said he needs another six months. Pero let us be honest to ourselves. It is happening. The Philippines is becoming more like Singapore in terms of of being able to walk the streets at any time at night. Ano po gusto natin? What do we want? Bumalik tayo, six years past, ipagpatuloy or ipagpatuloy natin pagbabago. Do we go back or do we go forward? More of the same or change? Gusto ba natin na takot ang tao at ang kriminal hindi takot? Would we rather that people are afraid and the criminals are not afraid? Or do we want criminals to be afraid of the law and people clinging to the law, respecting the law, feeling safe? Yes, human life is sacred. I showed those videos here where the President again and again assured us that there will be no state-sponsored extrajudicial killing. Where the President said he will punish any agent of the state that takes the law into their own hands. Yes, we should uphold the rule of law. This is the third time, Mr. President, na tumayo ako dito. Because the Senate is being used to mislead the public and the international media. Nung una, just to discredit the President and his efforts. But ngayon, Mr. President, iba na. Now, it is not only being used to discredit the President, Wittingly or unwittingly, ibig sabihin po sinasadya man o hindi. 
The effort to discredit is number one, destroying the image of our country abroad. Number two, destroying the image of the Senate as an institution and distracting us from much urgent work needed to be done. And third, destroying our long-honored traditions of collegiality, civility, of disagreeing but allowing the other person to speak freely when we disagree. Next slide, please. We have, we have to save our country from the efforts of a few politicians to discredit the president and his campaign against illegal drugs, crime, and corruption. That was my message in my first two speeches. Next slide. But this is what I humbly want to communicate to all of us here today. We have to save our nation from the efforts of a few people, not only politicians, not only Filipinos, but some in the international community, from destroying the image of our country, our economy, and the future of our next generation. Next slide. Cover of Time magazine, Night Falls on the Philippines. Ask our OFWs if that's how they feel. Take a survey today, Mr. President, upon the Philippine media. Were they safer in past administrations or are they safer now? Go to the communities. If six or seven out of ten Filipinos will not tell you they feel safer now, I will say goodbye to this August Hall, which I admire and learn to love. That is not a depiction of what is really happening in our country. It's not an accurate depiction. Next slide. You will see there a quote by Senator De Lima. We are on a slippery slope towards tyranny, says Philippine Senator Leila De Lima. Whether it's a state-sanctioned or not, I would say at the very least all these killings are state-inspired. I don't know if she's quoted correctly. But that is the image that is being sold to the international community. Next slide. New York Times. Rodrigo Duterte ordered Philippine killings. Professed Hitman testifies. Some of you here, our guests, the British parliamentarians, will say it's a fair headline. Anyway, uh, that was the real testimony. Let me answer that in a while. Next slide. Washington, Washington Post. Philippine witness. We killed for Duterte. Fed body to crocodile. Next slide. BBC News interviewed an alleged hit woman or killer saying that for 20,000 pesos, she killed vigilante style. Next slide. Philippine Daily Inquirer just accurately reporting that the EU pressed the Philippines for end of executions. EU speaking as if it is a fact that our state is executing people extrajudicially. Meron na po nagbenta sa EU. People have already misled them in the way that they have misled members of the United Nations to believe that what is happening here is a fact. They have added the usual deaths, murder and homicide that happened during the Arroyo and Aquino time. They have added it to the drug war and made it appear that the Philippines is now a killing fields, that there is a atmosphere of impunity. That's why I challenged all of them to come here. Unfortunately, some of them who came here only witnessed the hearing and was only interested in interviewing the witness rather than going to our communities here in Pasay, Manila, Quezon City, Davao, Leyte, Ilocos, Pampanga. Next slide, please. Bakit lahat na lang ng patay sa Pilipinas kasalanan ni Duterte? Is our president the Grim Reaper? Is the president liable for all of the deaths? He is here to save the innocent from being killed 
by the drug addicts, by the drug pushers. He is here to free us from the drug menace that has already ensnared almost 5% of our population. While OFWs are working, sacrificing, being abused in some places in our country, their children are being pressured by their peers, are being sold dr drugs, some of them bad, uh, the, the kind of drug that, that doesn't only kill you slowly, but kill you instantly. Next slide. Kitang-kita po ang bias ng ilang senador laban sa krusada ng Pangulo. Question. Is this a fair statement? Yes. I was once biased against the Arroyo administration. Is it wrong to be biased against the president? No. Because this is a democracy. You can be prejudiced, you can be biased, you can be for him, you can be against him. You can not have an opinion. That is your right. Then why am I standing up here and complaining? Because while you have rights, you also have responsibilities. Next slide. The responsibility of a chairperson in an investigation in aid of legislation is for the factual, for the, for a factual investigation so that the truth will come out. And as I said, this is the third time that I have, I have stood up here. And if you look, I, we don't have time to look at all of the statements of the Honorable Senator De Lima, but she has already made a judgment when she was in the CHR. She has already had made a judgment when she was in a DOJ. And if it is true that her witness was in the WPP Witness Protection Program in 2014, she had the witness but did not file the case. But when she got here to the Senate and got the Committee on Justice and Human Rights, she decided to chair the committee, which is her right to do so. But she refused to be neutral, Mr. Chair, with, with all due respect. If you tell me, Alan, ikaw na lang mag-chair, I will say, I cannot. Because I am also biased. Let someone else chair. In my past speech, I said, I'm not even asking that she be removed from the Committee on Justice. Only from certain hearings where we cannot expect cold neutrality. But look at her opening statement. Marahil, may ugnay natin ang kababalaghang ito sa nangyari sa Davao City mula noong dekada nobenta hanggang sa kasalukuyan at kung paano ang buong Pilipinas ngayon ay larawan ng siyudad ng Davao sa mahigit dalawang dekadang pamumuno ni dating Mayor Duterte. Look at that statement. First of all, she takes it as a fact that there is a DDS. Duterte death squad po yun, ha? marami ng DDS ngayon. She takes it as a fact. Number two, she is saying that mauugnay, you can link up what was happening in Davao to the country. So no wonder, even if DDS or killings in Davao has no place in the present EKR, EKJ hearings, we brought that surprise witness without informing the co-chairman, Senator Lacson, without informing the members. When our tradition in this August Hall is that when we have a surprise witness, we keep the identity a surprise. We keep his testimony a surprise. But we let the members know that there will be a key member so they can prepare and so that they will be in the hearings. Kaya maraming hindi nag -attende. Until 4 o'clock the day before, we were not given the list of invitees. And even when we were given it at 4.05 the day before, wala po doon that there will be an extra witness. Next slide, please. The chairman or chairperson has the responsibility to vet the witness and test the credibility of the witness before allowing the witness to testify before the committee. That's very clear, Mr. Chairman. Let me go back to the slides I showed you about BBC, Time, the Washington Post. Is there anything wrong, per se, of that headline when they themselves with their eyes, ears, perceive the hearings here? No, I do not blame them. I do not say, per se, it is bad journalism. But take in these factors. One, they were fed by Philippine sources. Paulit-ulit ang ilan publication, ilan politiko, including Senator De Lima, of misleading them in the numbers. 
saying that 3,000 na ang patay, drug, lahat to. Using the words vigilante, killings, kill list, um, extrajudicial killings in a very loose term. Second, dynamics of Congress and the Parliament. Wala na po sa likod natin ang British parliamentarians. I haven't heard sa France, sa UK, sa US, that an unvetted, isang witness na dadalhin doon na hindi mo sigurado kung ano sasabihin, hindi mo alam kung galing sa mental hospital o hindi mo alam kung ano ang motibo, kung anong gustong gawin, ay dadalhin sa Kongreso. Kaya hindi natin masisi ang mga foreign news outlets na yun ang nireport. Bakit? Eh kasi ang tingin nila sa Kongreso ng Pilipinas mataas. You will not put a witness who is not credible. I, I sympathize with Senator Lacson because of the witness that was placed before him. Uh, Mr. Mawanay. No, and I think Senator... No, as a victim. Victim. There were many victims in this hall. But, remember Mr. President, when they victimized the senators, it hit them individually in this institution. It did not hit the country. But putting a witness against the president makes it seem that the whole country is for extrajudicial killing. Pag binasa niyo po yung mga article, it says, he is immensely popular with 92%, so they let him do it, etc., etc., something like that. So they're giving the impression that we are not a civilized people, that we are not a modern people with values, with, with strong moral values, and just because our president is popular, and just because we're fed up with drug lords, we'll just kill them all. In fact, I heard from many people saying even the addicts are being killed. When many, many times... This has been disputed. In fact, later on, I will show you a slide where businessmen are volunteering hundreds of millions of pesos to build rehab centers. Lastly, Mr. President, kung yung ibang mga Jario TV sa atin, nakalink din naman sa negosyo, they try to always be objective, but they also have their interest. That is the same abroad. Geopolitics. Do you think there will be no repercussions when the president said a independent foreign policy? Do you think some countries in this world have not gotten news that the Philippines just follows them? Ku ano sabihin nila sunod ang Pilipinas. And this is upsetting them. And that is probably why it is much easier to get all these issues together, extrajudicial killings, foreign policy, What's up between Duterte and China? What's up with the economy and everything? Next slide, please. I was not even allowed to speak for a few minutes, Mr. President, when a colleague of ours questioned my right to speak. Let me clarify, Mr. President. First of all, it is our tradition here that non-members will have a voice but no vote in any hearing. Secondly, Mr. President, it is our tradition here that after the first round, there will be a second, third, fourth round. It is only Manny Pacquiao who ends at round 10 and usually knocks out his opponent before that. But for senators, we can go any amount of rounds for as long as the chairman says that it will continue. If not, we will do uh, next day. Our, our record... If I'm not mistaken, in the ZTE hearings was 11 hours. Mr. President, when my right to speak was questioned, initially I wasn't even given a right just to explain that for the purpose of that hearing, I am a member or deemed a member because I am po yung agenda. I gave a privileged speech. And as author of either the bill, the resolution, or as the person who gave the speech, you are invited to that hearing and you are allowed to speak. Okay. Having said that, Mr. President, one of our colleagues sent me an apology letter and none of us here are perfect. I'm not perfect. If I offended him, I am also sorry. If I offended the Filipino people, I am also sorry. But when you are in that situation and words are told to you and you are shocked, 
being a senator of nine years and a congressman of nine years. And, you know, um, how do I put it, Mr. President? We come to work knowing that we will have the warm appreciations of our colleagues, whether or not they agree with us. How many times have I disagreed with the majority leader? We have traded places. Siya majority, minority ako. Ako majority, siya minority. We have argued on many bills. Nagkataasan pa ng bosses. But I always go up to him and say, Boss, kamusta? Pasensya na. He always goes up to me and says, Lan, ano lang yan? Issue lang yan. We have Miranda together. But I will not go into the details because precisely, I understand our colleague at sabi niya, dala na rin lang ng, ng uh, nangyari. No? But, May I point out, Mr. President, that when things like that happen, there are still rules. I appreciate the Sergeant of Arms coming to me and saying, Sir, tumayo ako, but I wasn't going to accost you. But he did stand up. Why? Because Chairperson De Lima called for the Sergeant of Arms, and that was uncalled for. Why? When you say you are out of order, that simply means there is a rule violated. You only call the Sergeant at Arms when there is disorderly behavior, when you are there to remove an audience or the senator because of disorderly behavior. So there is no gagging in this Senate. So if I insist to keep talking on the same topic, then that is disorderly behavior. But if were, I was going to talk on a different topic, so for example, Mr. President, I said, I'd like to give a privileged speech. You said no. You said out of order. I can appeal your judgment, Mr. President, and we will vote. That is one of my options. The other option is I will say, Mr. President, I agree. May I go to another matter? I will not now stand on a matter of personal and collective uh, privilege. I will now make a manifestation. That is my right. That is in order. That is not out or of order. Yet what happened, and if you review the tapes, in that instance, upon... Uh, Making the judgment that I was out of order, I was denied the right to appeal to the body, I was denied the right to speak again. And I was threatened that the Sergeant of Arms will get me and throw me out. <coughs> and thank you, Mr. Sergeant of Arms, for your level-headedness and for your patience. That's why walang nangyari. And thank you, PNP, and thank you, audience, na none of you came rushing. And thank you also, Senator Trillanes, though all of us both of us were in a heated um, argument. We kept it to words, and we didn't go beyond words. No, But Mr. President, will we allow it to go any further? Mr. President, let's go to the root cause. The root cause is ginagamit kasi yung committee, not for a factual finding of extrajudicial killings, but to go after the President, and to, in effect, wittingly or unwittingly, nasisiraan yung buong Bansa. Next slide, please. May I respectfully assert that Senator De Lima in her desire to destroy the President is destroying the integrity and reputation of the Senate and worse, damaging the image of the country and the people worldwide. Sir President, tignan niyo po yung internet. Nung araw po, it's up to the lawyers to cross-examine. But with the world of social media, Every phone has a camera. You can rewind, you can fast forward, you can copy. You can even read lips. Nakapatay ang mic, natetape pa rin ng powerful mic ng mga may camera o kaya nababasa yung lips. I'll not go through all of it, Mr. President, but tignan nyo po yung witness na dinala po dito. Una, sinabi, Paolo Duterte is a drug addict. Vice Mayor, the Honorable Vice Mayor of, of uh, Davao. There was no question from the Chair what the evidence was. But when I cross-examined him, Mr. President, lumabas hearsay. Narinig pa lang niya. Wala pala siyang ebidensya at all. Di niya nakita, di niya narinig, hindi niya nakita yung shabu. Nung una ang sabi niya, bodyguard siya, hinahatid siya, malapit siya. Nung sinabi kong, ba't hindi mo na-obserban? Eh, sir, hindi naman ako dikit sa kanya. Then, when I was saying, so it's only because of your perception. Mukha lang pala. Parang lang pala. Or in Bisaya, murag. No? Murag lang pala. Ano sabi niya? Hindi, sir. Alam na alam sa Davao. Rinig na rinig. 
Okay. Sinabi naman po na siya ay smuggler sa port at may hawak ng sasa port sa Davao. But the Secretary of Justice, Secretary De Lima, during that time, investigated this. And she even helped ask uh, Mayor Duterte, or at least uh, it was um, BR's Commissioner Kim Henares who called Mayor Duterte and asked him for help. If they had evidence against Paulo Duterte, why didn't they file cases? Why did they allow Mayor Duterte to testify in this August hall? But pinabayaan mag-testify as if totoo. Sinabi po nung pinatay daw yung Richard King and my condolences to the family, it's so hard to get over a killing in the family but to be brought into the limelight like this and then to add certain ano, certain um, circumstances that gives pain to the family. Let me in behalf of the Senate with the with the with the permission of my colleagues, apologize to their family. Una, sinabi sa McDonald daw pinatay. Oh. Hindi ba, Mr. President, mukha na tayong napakababaw na Senado? Tignan niyo po social media. Punong-puno ng letrato ni Jollibee at ni McDonald's nag-aaway. At sinasabi ni McDonald's, Jollibee, ikaw ang may hawak ng witness na to, no? Pinasabi mo na may patayan dito sa McDonald's. We are being ridiculed. Simply because the witness was not vetted. Simply because hindi muna pinagawan ng akidabit at hindi muna tinignan. Sir President, I've never seen a better video of thriller than that of Michael Jackson. But for 20 years, madami pong gumagaya nun. But may lumabas po ngayon na video na parang zombie, parang thriller, pero binabaril ng tatlong pong tao supposedly. Supposedly, mocking, ridiculing the testimony of Mr. Matobato of the killing of a certain NBI agent, Amisola. And again, to their family, condolences. No? And we're sorry that this is being brought up. Mr. President, the witness claims to be a professional hitman a professional killer. What is professional? Professional doesn't just mean that you get a card from the PRC. Professional does not mean that you pass an exam and you're already a member of the Professional Regulatory Commission. No. Professional means you're the best at your job. 30 kayo, tatlong po kayo, inubos daw ang laman ng barel. Senator Lacson, ilan ang laman ng usual ng isang magazine? Seven. Gawin na lang natin five shooter na lang, hindi na seven. Oh. Five shooter ang ginamit. 150 bullets yon. Professional killers. Hindi mapatay yung papatayin nila. Kaya dumating pa daw si Duterte na may dalawang magazine. Sir President, look at the international headlines. You know, Mr. President, who I pity most here? The OFWs. You know why? They are starting to write, they're starting to send messages to these international outlets. In Australia, a brave OFW wrote to the 30 or 60 minutes saying that what you have presented is totally unfair. Hindi yan ang nangyayari sa Pilipinas. But the problem is, Mr. President, these OFWs need the foreign media need the host media of where they are because they also need protection as migrant workers. Yet they are forced to stand up to protect the integrity of their president and their nation because it is being falsely pictured. And where is that falsity emanating from? From this August hall. Next slide, please. Sir President, with all due respect, anyone can file a resolution. There's nothing per se wrong about Senator Trillanes filing resolution number 151. But isn't it obvious? Ito na yung next step. Committee on Justice na naman, DDS na naman. So we know where this is going. I will not mention any more to you what happened during the hearing because napanood nyo. I will answer questions. I was approached by some of my friends in the Liberal Party 
and ask, are you accusing all of us? And I told them, no. If you look at my statement, I said there are two or three senators and two of them are liberals. And I even gave their names. And I said, that is my theory. And when I went out, and thank you to Rappler, nakuha nila, side view, ang sinabi ko, I don't think the Vice President is involved. That's why if she's offended that I, I, I said that, actually, ako dapat ma-offend. Dahil kailangan medyo mag-research ng konti yung kanyang mga media people. Because I did not say she was involved. But by force of law, pag matanggal ang Pangulo, ang Vice President upo. And many plots around the world does not include the Vice President. It just happens and people close to the, to the successor will be the one doing this. No? And Mr. President, that was not my only theory. Review the hearing. Ang tinanong ko sa witness, ano ba gusto mo mangyari? Pag nangyari to, sabi niya para malaman buong Pilipinas. O hindi ba matatanggal siya bilang Pangulo? Oo. O sino magiging Vice President? Ang Vice President po natin magiging Presidente. O sino ba galit sa Pangulo? Hindi ba drug lords galit sa Pangulo? Hindi ba ang uh, oligarchs na pinangalanan ng Pangulo galit sa kanya? Hindi ba ang drug lords ang uh, etong uh, illegal gambling lords galit na rin dahil susunod sila? So Mr. President, I named several groups that want the President out. And there's no denying that. No? That's why I was testing my theory there. And I stand by it. But I did not make false accusations. Many of the people in the Liberal Party are close friends. And I will not generalize. In fact, ang kadibati ko, si Senator Trillanes, ay kapartido ko. Di ba? But I said, that's obviously Senator De Lima and obviously Senator Trillanes is part of this. Next slide. So, President, may I just emphasize, hindi lang po pusher ang kalaban ng ating Pangulo. He has launched the war on poverty. Yung pong endo na gusto ng maraming mga negosyante, nandito si Joel Vinanueva, trying to make sense, trying to talk to everyone, the labor unions, uh, palace, the uh, businessmen on how to have a law that will satisfy everyone. Many of the oligarchs help the country. Some of them do not. Some of these oligarchs have launched things to discredit the president. Some of them are now donating left and right to help the president. War against crime, illegal drugs, and corruption. The president has already announced that the DOJ is already looking into many matters involving politicians in corruption. And last, the war on war or the quest for lasting peace. Here and abroad, many are not comfortable that members of the left or the communist are in the cabinet. That is the reality. Hindi ko pa nalagay dyan yung war on illegal um, gambling na inannounced ni Chief PNP Bato de la Rosa. So, Mr. President, there, there are many more that I can name. Next slide. But look at the initial reaction of some business groups and some people. People even want to invest. We are in, the, if we are in a different situation now. It is totally different from what we experienced in the past, commenting on the confidence in Duterte's war against drugs. Next slide. Philippine Star Global, 13 top business groups to help rebuild rehab centers. Next. These are some of the things being done while we're talking about this. Duterte ordering the cutting of red tape. Duterte asking the chief presidential legal to find out how we can distribute the 71, but that's almost 100 billion COCO levy funds or make use of it. Dole to impose a moratorium on ENDO. Next slide. Executive order on FOI. Uh, an EO on agri-land conversion moratorium. Even the Supreme Court has moved so that there will be more courts to handle drug cases. Peace talks are seeing the light of day. Next slide. Mr. President, in the end, we might all lose these wars. But the biggest loser will not be Duterte. It will be the economy, 
the political institutions, and the entire nation. So why sit by and just watch? Why allow our institution to be used that way? There are 24 senators here. There are 30 committees. Senator De Lima is a very talented senator, a very experienced lawyer, an efficient public servant. She can handle so many other committees, Mr. President. But Mr. President, allow me to appeal to this August body. Gusto ba natin pagkausap natin mga sekretary, eto na lang pinag-uusapan natin. Kausap natin mga foreigners, eto na lang pinag-uusapan. Or do we want to talk about building bridges, building subways, building uh, railroads, no? building homes, finding the latest in drug rehab, no? um, upgrading our technical skills, finding money for K-12 para mag-succeed. Siguro sabi nung iba, Sir President, uh, Alan, we're colleagues here, we're all doing that. Yes. But please admit to me, every time you talk to a secretary or a foreigner or an ambassador, you start by asking, how's the president? He's a colorful guy, uh, this drug war, etc. Parating dun muna na pupunte. Because ito ang ginagawang front and center. Eh. Na, nakita nyo na ba sa Time Magazine, The Economist or CNN-BBC, that ano, business is so um, enthusiastic and upswing? Sir President, I went to Senator Recto because I am a fan of the way he does research, and I believe he is the economic guru of the Senate. And Moody's is coming to the country as well as other groups to reassess, to find out opinions, etc. And Senator Recto told me, Alan, don't forget political risk. Lahat itong ginagawa abroad is trying to show people na malaki ang political risk sa Pilipinas. So kung ikaw ay gagawa ng plantas ng kotse, pwede ka sa Vietnam, pwede ka sa Malaysia, pwede ka sa Thailand, sa Pilipinas, ay wag na sa Pilipinas, baka magkagulo eh. May atmosphere of impunity eh. Kung ikaw ay pharmaceutical na dati sa France ka gumagawa, and then ayaw mo sa China for some reason, oh Vietnam, India, or Philippines, wag na sa Pilipinas kasi magulo dun eh. That is the implication. So with tourism, Mr. President, Thailand gets 10 million Chinese tourists, we get 500,000. There are neighbors. I will not share with you all the statistics. Senator Dick Gordon is the expert in tourism. And he will tell you all of these factors that have to all come together for tourism to be successful. But you ask him, are these news reports helpful? And remember, tourism, for every two tourists, one job is created in the Philippines. So how many jobs have we lost because in the last two months, instead of giving the president a honeymoon period, instead of focusing on extrajudicial killings, we are focusing on him. Last slide, Mr. President. Last slide. Next slide, please. So that's the last slide, Mr. President. I submit to this August body. But this time, Mr. President, last time I asked you to think about it. May I humbly ask that we act upon it today, if possible, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Keta. Majority Leader. Mr. President, may I recognize? Senator Pacquiao, for purposes of interpolation, is recognized. Mr. President, uh, I move that the chairmanship of the and members of the Committee on Justice be declared vacant. Mr. President, may I have a uh, one minute suspension, Mr. President? Uh, before we move to Senator Drillon, yes. just to point out that under the rules, you cannot uh, declare as vacant the chairmanship of a committee. There is no rule that allows that. I think uh, he, the motion encompasses the entire membership, Senator Drillon. No, I, I thought, well, yes, sir, clarify. Uh, Mr. President, uh, may we hear the motion President again, Mr. President? What? Sorry? The motion, can we, can we restate the motion? I thought also you were interpolating. But I move that the chairmanship, uh, chairmanship and members of the Committee on Justice uh, be declared vacant. That Mr. is President. the motion. And there is a pending motion to suspend. Session is suspended for a few minutes.
Hello. Hello. May we ask the members of the Senate to join the Senate President uh, in the uh, Senator's Lounge? Session is resumed. Majority Leader, what, what is the parliamentary situation? Uh, before the suspension, Mr. President, there was a motion by Senator Manny Pacquiao to uh, declare vacant the entire comi Justice Committee. Uh, that is the uh, previous question, Mr. President. So, with the permission of the Chamber, I move to uh, call for the previous question. There is a motion to declare vacant the position of Chairman as well as members of the Justice Committee. Any objection? Senator Dillon. <coughs> we register our objection. We believe there is no basis for the motion. Any other? Uh, Senator Antiveros. Thank you, Mr. President. On behalf of Akabayan Party, I respectfully register my objection. Salamat kay. So, th uh, there are, there are uh, objections. We have to divide the House. Yes, Mr. President. Call, call vote, please, Secretary. Okay. Uh, the mo a yes vote leads to the declaration of the position of chairman and members of the Justice Committee as vacant. That is the motion. A yes, that is the effect of a yes vote. Uh, Senator Recto, yes. Yes, Mr. President. On the part of the minority, this is an issue to be resolved by the majority. Mr. President, on the part of the minority, we take no part. <coughs> Okay. So with the manifestation of the minority leader, we will automatically uh, register the vote of the minority members here present as abstain. Mr. Secretary, please go ahead with the roll call vote. The Honorable Senators Angara, Aquino, Binay, Caetano, De Lima, Drilon, Ejercito, Escudero, Gatchalian, Gordon, Honasan, Monteveros, Laxon, Ligarda, Pacquiao, Pangilinan, Po, Recto, Soto. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. May I explain my vote as taking no part in the voting? <laughs> Mr. Mr. President, it is very simple. Let me put it this way. Can, can Mr. President, let me can, put it this way. Oh, a simple explanation. The majority cannot determine the members of the minority because the majority will always have the majority. And that's why this is a vote of no confidence on the part of the majority. We are not the chairman and the majority members of the committee. At the appropriate time when a new committee is formed, the minority will elect among ourselves our representation in the committee. Thank you, Senator Recto. Can we continue now with Senator Soto? Soto, Trillanes, Villanueva, Villar, Soveri, yes. Senate President. Yes. yes. No, automatic. Trillanis is abstained automatically. The, uh, can I announce the results first? With 16 affirmative votes, 4 negative votes, and 2 abstentions, the motion is approved. 
Mr. President, uh, Senator Ontiveros. Senator Ontiveros is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Majority Floor Leader. May I explain my no vote, Mr. President? Salamat po. Mr. President, there was no overwhelming, no overwhelming reason to declare the chairmanship of the Committee on Justice vacant. If there were issues against Senator Lila's objectivity or capacity, the proper venue for this was the Committee on Ethics. According to Section 13, Rule 2 of the Rules of the Senate, the Committee on Ethics has jurisdiction over all matters relating to the conduct, rights, privileges, safety, dignity, integrity, and reputation of the Senate and its members. It is for this reason that I, as a member of the Committee on Ethics, voted against the motion. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Antiveros. Majority Leader. Mr. President, uh, I move to refer the privileged speech of Senator Cayetano to the Committee on Rules. There is a motion to refer the privileged speech of uh, Senator Cayetano earlier delivered to the Committee on Rules. Any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Mr. President, <clears throat> I move to elect Senator uh, Richard Gordon as Chairman of the Committee on Justice uh, with members Senator Lacson, Vice Pacquiao, Subiri, Angara, Pangilinan, De Lima, Cayetano as members. On the part of the minority? Eight. One huh? um, um, may I have a one minute suspension, Mr. President? Minute suspension. President, uh, session is resumed. Mr. President, I move. I um, I would like to amend my motion. I move to elect the reluctant <laughs> candidate for uh, chairman. We <laughs> members of the majority had to convince him. Um, Senator Gordon as chairman, Senator Lacson as vice chairman, and members Pacquiao, Zubiri, Po. Pangilinan, De Lima, Cayetano. On the part of the minority? Eight. Isa. Nine lang ito eh, nine. De, nine lang. Eight lang. Nine lang. Eight lang. Dalawa kayo. Mr. President, may I find out, uh, in the previous Committee on Justice, who were the members of the majority and who were the members of the minority? Because my understanding is that we had two members of the minority. The record is with me. Is uh, Senator Escudero and Trillanes were members of the Justice Committee. So there are two members of the minority. In the succeeding computations, Mr. President, I think the, this was one of the first committees that we elected yeah. before. And during that time, we were not sure of uh, the computation. But right now, yeah. the exact computation is 21 over 3 over 24. 21 over 24, 24, over 24 times 9. Times 9. And the result is 7.875 and For, 1. Uh, 1 point point 1. Yes. Okay. Precisely, Mr. President, why I've taken the, the position of taking no part. After we, after the majority decided to have a vote of no confidence on their members, and I mentioned earlier it is the right of the minority to nominate our members, at this present time the majority is now 
nominating the members of the committee. Now that the numbers of the minority have been uh, reduced to one member, may we have uh, 24 hours until we nominate a member of the minority. In the meantime, uh, may yes. we um, yes. act on my motion, Mr. President? Yes, Majority Leader. There is a motion now to constitute the Justice Committee with Senator Gordon as the chairman and the other members named as either vice chairman or members thereof. Any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved and the Justice Committee is so constituted. Senator Gordon? With the permission of the Majority Floor Leader, Mr. President, I am honored and I thank uh, uh, those of you who asked me to chair this committee. I do so without any lobbying on my part to get this committee. The Senate President is well aware of the fact that I never asked for the Blue Ribbon Committee and what was left of the, blue, of the other committee I accepted without any lobbying on my part. In this particular instance, hindi rin po ako nanghingi nitong committee ito. It's a very, very difficult task uh, to handle, especially with the Blue Ribbon Committee and the Government Corporations Committee as well. I have handled three committees in my first time in the Senate, and uh, as you know, I will always give it 100% whenever we do handle these committees. I do pray for the support of the members and the understanding. I just want to say this, uh, in all candor, this is uh, an event that I don't think anybody wants to have to declare a committee vacant along with its members is something that goes against the grain of any Senate. Unfortunately, as I was saying earlier, and the Senate President will recall, we have to choose the committees very, very well. Otherwise, there will be conflict. And the situation on the Committee on Justice was not, not, certainly not unexpected. Certainly, the pressure being put to bear upon the President and certain members of the Senate accusing one another of all kinds of uh, things does not help. And certainly, uh, the result was not totally unexpected. I'd like to bring to this committee, therefore, an objective investigation of whatever is brought before the plate or whatever laws we have to sponsor uh, or meetings that we have to go. Certainly, a lot of consultation will have to be made. I voted reluctantly for this as well. But I voted with a clear conscience. And you know me, Mr. President, I do not vote half-heartedly. When I make a decision, I go for it on all fours. And precisely because of that, I did not want a situation where we would be second-guessing what was going to happen next in the committee. Certainly, it may have put, perhaps, arguably, the Senate in a very difficult position because every day, the issues before the Committee on Justice was getting the headlines. Rightly or wrongly, it was unfair to the Senate. It was unfair, more importantly, to the country. And certainly, it behooves us all to make sure that we go beyond the expectations of the public and go take the highest traditions that this Senate has had in the past. Now, Mr. President, it is precisely for this reason that I hope that everybody will understand and learn from this experience. Nobody is happy seeing uh, senators being displaced from their committees, let alone the person involved. And we commiserate. But, you know, the situation in the country is very fluid right now, and there are many things coming out in the woodwork. The whole world is talking about, in the, about the, the country, and from what I hear, and from what has been said by the President, particularly in matters involving foreign policy, I did expect that there would be reactions from the powers that be in the international community. And that is why I'm very concerned about the situation. I'm also concerned about the fact that the President is going around the country talking to the military. Everywhere. And you can see that every day. And perhaps he is very concerned about his... his uh, uh, the situation in the country, having a war on drugs and a war on terrorism. If all the members of this Senate listened to the privileged speech of this representation the other week, I never threatened to come up and say we were going to declare a suspension of the writ of habeas corpus. 
Precisely because of that, I merely came out to this conclusion, Mr. President, because I fear the consequences. Because I didn't want the Senate polarized. In the first place, Mr. President, you already have a situation because everybody's saying you cannot have an objective result from combatants. And there are combatants here from the executive and from the legislation. And so to the wisdom of the Senate in declaring the seat vacant, I believe that decision was made, Mr. President, and I will call for the orders of the day because I'm not distracted and I appreciate that Senate President Delong, my good friend, and my good friend Majo, Majority Floor Leader, are talking. And uh, sometimes it's very disturbing, Mr. President. I'm not saying I'm being disturbed by it. All I'm saying is uh, <laughs> delivering an, an extemporaneous speech would uh, mean that I would get some, I would get some, you know, attention, so to speak, if I have to beg for it, and I'm not. And so, Mr. President, so that my line of thinking will not be, you know, derailed, we do so here today for the benefit of the Senate, for an objective Senate, a Senate that will provide objectivity in the hearings, and that is why you can take a look even at the composition. I did not take part in selecting. I let the whole Senate talk about it, and we tried to reach them in the other parts of the majority, and they were the ones who recommended, and that is why Senator Cayetano is a member of the committee, and so is Senator De Lima. And we tried to get lawyers, Mr. President, to come into the committee so that whatever investigation will happen will be done in the highest interest of the country. It doesn't serve us well when suddenly witnesses are produced and the co-chairman of the committee, Senator Lockson, is not aware of it. It opens us to criticism. That is what we will try to avoid. We will avoid surprises. We will be transparent because that's the rule of law. Transparency, predictability, consistency, and continuity. And that is why, Mr. President, while I do so reluctantly, I do not shirk at the responsibility. I will accept the challenge with the help of the members of the committee, and I thank them for their vote of confidence, but I do expect that they will also participate in all the hearings with fairness, with economy, and with the highest interest of the country at heart. And even if some of them will be talking, I'm sure they will be talking, out, not out of turn, but they were talking about the issues of the day. And hope that that will be translated in the decisions that we're going to make in the future. Thank you very much, colleagues, you. and thank you very much, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Gordon. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, by the way, for the record, Mr. President, uh, earlier when we were discussing this with uh, Senator Gordon, we had assurances that the investigations of the Senate Committee on Justice on extrajudicial killings will continue, Yes. Uh, for the record. May we now recognize Senator Trillanes, Mr. Senator President? Senator Trillanes is recognized. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. In line with the manifestation of the majority floor leader, uh, this representation would like to uh, register or have this parliamentary inquiry regarding the status of the protective custody of uh, Mr. Edgar Matobato, which was ruled upon uh, by the, uh, the Justice Committee last Thursday, unanimously, if I may say. And uh, although this uh, representation submits that uh, the Senate President has the authority over the sanctuary within the premises of the, the Senate, but the protective custody part is the one this, uh, this representation is questioning. I so move, uh, Mr. President. Majority Leader, can we, can we clarify now the parliamentary situation? I, 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 I don't think there is a motion, Mr. President. I think it's a parliamentary inquiry and what we should yes. do, uh, what we should do with the status. Uh, Mr. President, I will be speaking uh, based on my opinion, mm, because I remember, I distinctly remember during the committee hearing, I was still there when Senator Drillanes moved that the witness be um, uh, accepted by the Senate as a witness, under a witness protection program of some sort, and I, I pointed out that there is no such program in the Senate, so he, ref he rephrased it by saying that uh, to um, uh, 
uh, have the witness in protective custody. And I indeed said that uh, if protective custody have been a goes up, and I have no problems. You know, but the witness protection program, uh, I've been here since 1992. We've never heard, we've never had any witness protection program in the Senate. So that is the situation. Um, uh, there were three or four members of the Blue Ribbon that were there, and in the original motion, I, we were, Senator Lachson and I were asking uh, uh, if there was a quorum. Uh, so we did not really, I don't know, uh, I, 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 um, uh, um, I, I was not, I was not there when the committee so decided. No, so I, I cannot speak for that. Now, the question of the gentleman is what do we do now with the protective custody of the witness uh, now that there is a um, reorganization in the Committee on Justice? So uh, we leave it to the discretion of the, pres the Senate President because um, the, um, the uh, Senator Trilanes, member of the minority, may be able to take it up on the floor. Mr. President, Senator Drilon, may I offer a solution? The matter mm. of the protective custody of the witness was decided by the committee. Now there is a new, mem new composition of the committee. I would earnestly suggest that this issue be brought before the committee for the committee to decide what to do with this protective custody. Since this is a matter in the committee, not before the plenary. That is my Senator submission, Mr. President. Senator Trillanes, you so, wanted to say? Uh, so in the meantime, Mr. President, the protective custody, unless uh, rescinded by the new uh, membership, would remain? Uh, is that the, the ruling, Mr. If that Mr. was the ruling, Mr. President, if that was the ruling of the committee, then uh, so be it. But under protective custody of the committee, and let the committee decide according to Senator Solomon Drilon, Mr. President. <laughs> That's why the, the Senate President uh, refrained from participating in the discussion because I have no knowledge of the what happened before the committee at the committee level. Precisely. So, so, the, uh, so I will I, just uh, I will just accept the factual allegation that there was a committee decision to extend uh, protective custody. So that should be now addressed to the to the new committee. Senator yes. Gordon? <clears throat> I'm a bit confused, Mr. President, because as far as I know, uh, the matter I think that the committee decided on was to refer it to the Senate President. Correct. And uh, mm -hmm. I bow to the wisdom of the current Senate President, including the Solomonic one, uh, uh, and uh, we will try to find out by looking at the minutes, Mr. President. I think we should look at the minutes to find out what actually was discussed uh, so that we could actually uh, decide on this matter uh, because truth to tell if I'm sure any member of the, uh, the Senate was handling the committee other than the charged atmosphere that the chairman at that time was at I'm sure they would not have also allowed a witness coming from outside coming from the cold discussing things that were not part of the resolution the original resolution of the committee mr. president so I would therefore ask uh, my colleague, Senator Trillanes, that we all look at the records of the hearing last time before we make a decision, without the permission of everybody. Yes. In the meantime, uh, so, uh, that is the suggestion of uh, Senator Trillanes, that let the committee decide. So, so in the meantime, so in the meantime, uh, in the meantime it stands uh, as it is, uh, Mr. President. So whatever is in the minutes, that, uh, that decision would pr prevail until uh, received the Until the new committee by, decides, by, yes. Uh, I, I right. submit, Mr. President. All right. Uh, with that, Mr. President, uh, I move to adjourn the session because the Senate President and the members of the Senate have, a, um, have uh, guests from the British Parliament waiting. So we will proceed with the reference of business tomorrow, Mr. President. So in the meantime, I move to adjourn the session until 3 o'clock in the afternoon of Tuesday, September 20, 2016. Is there any objection? There being none, the session is adjourned until 3 o'clock in the afternoon of Tuesday, September 20, 2016.